Go outside and fight now. Go. No, bro, give us. I don't want you far away. I will die one. Let's face it, it's lonely at the top if you're a high-end flagship Android smartphone. Like, because of what happened to Huawei, you know, if you wanted to buy like a balls-to-the-wall, no-compromise Android flagship, odds are you're gonna have to buy a Samsung. Or do you? Because Oppo, with their brand new Find X3 Pro, well, they want you to reconsider. So what is the Oppo Find X3 Pro? Well, this is their latest high-end flagship smartphone from the Find series. You may remember the Find X, which is that crazy phone with the sliding mechanism, and then the Find X2, which was like a proper mass market Android flagship smartphone. And this, this is the third iteration. And I think it might just be the best one yet. So you know when I say that uh, a, a flagship smartphone has to be that it has to make a really good first impression. So stuff like build and feel and all of that is really important. Well, for the Find X3 Pro, I think they've absolutely nailed it. The moment you pick it up, you can tell that this is like a premium device, you know. It's, going to, it's got that expensive vibe to it, which is really good. You have like these really smooth seams between the glass and the metal frame. You've got this curved edge on the display. And then there's the prise de resistance, which is this beautiful curved glass back. So you can tell like how it's like this smooth, unbroken panel. And then it sort of like, 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 matches the, 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 I don't know, how do you say this? It hugs the, the camera bump, I guess, in this like almost organic way. And it, it just looks, it looks cool. Like. It looks iconic, you know? Um, according to Oppo, each piece takes about 40 hours to make from a single sheet of glass. And that to me sounds like a, an insane amount of hours just to make one piece of glass for one smartphone. And that's not even the best part. The, the color that I have here is this blue color. There's another one that is black and that has like a mirror finish. So it's like almost exactly like a mirror. Lah. And I think that one looks even more trippy because the, the difference between the you know glossy camera bump area and also the rest of the phone is like almost not there. So it looks even more organic. Like I really dig like the little details that Oppo has put into this glass bag. So as far as build is concerned, this smartphone, top marks absolutely top marks. And then we have performance. So for a flagship smartphone to be good, it has to have the top of the line performance. And this device, it delivers. It's powered by Qualcomm's brand new Snapdragon 88 processor, which is, you know, the best chip that they make. Uh, and it also comes with 12 gigs of RAM. And this model has 256 gigs of internal storage. If I had one gripe, it would be the storage because I think 256 gigs is not quite enough. I think if you're going to really go all out and make like an insane smartphone, it should have 512 gigs of storage but at least it's not 128 so I guess 256 is pretty good for most people and I've been using this smartphone um, on and off for a little bit because I haven't had a lot of time to spend with this device uh, but so far gaming is great on it everything runs really smoothly um, browsing you know all the stuff that you would need a smartphone to do like so far no hiccups so that's pretty good I'm also quite impressed with the new color OS because um, Oppo's Software has always been like, you know, famous for being really bloated, really ugly. But I think that they've really dialed it back recently and the new version, uh, ColorOS 11, isn't quite as egregious as its predecessors. You can have stuff like, you know, an app drawer and, you know, everything doesn't look super cartoony and ridiculous anymore. And that, I think, is a good thing. The only thing that I'm, I mean, I'm still not a big fan of is that there are still a lot of unnecessary apps that come preloaded with the, with the OS. So that is something like, I would like the option to at least turn it off when I'm, you know, setting up the smartphone if I don't want all those like extra duplicate apps. These days, flagship smartphones also cannot skimp on battery. And honestly, for the Find X3 Pro, I think this is maybe my one of my least favorite things about it. It has a 4,500 milliamp hour cell, which, isn't super great for a 2021 flagship smartphone. I think like, if you're gonna go all out on a flagship smartphone, give me 5,000 milliamp hours, you know? Give me that big five zero zero zero. 
Um, but the upside is that it does support SuperVOOC 2.0 and that's a 65 watt fast charging standard. And this time, unlike its predecessor, it has wireless charging. So um, they call it AirVOOC and it charges at 30 watts, which is okay lah, pretty good. And then there is the screen. So the Oppo Find X3 Pro has a really gorgeous screen. It's like one of the nicest screens that I've seen on a smartphone. And before this, you know, I was checking out like the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. So it's, it's right up there. This is a dual curve screen. It's 6.7 inches and it pushes a resolution of Quad HD+. Plus. So you've got high res, a good size, and the sexy gorgeous curves. And then it also has a refresh rate of 120 hertz, which means everything is smooth and buttery and you can run 120 hertz at Quad HD resolution. Plus, there is also an adaptive mode that can uh, let the phone intelligently set its refresh rate based on what you're using it for. So you can go all the way down to five hertz or all the way up to 120 hertz, depending on the task. What's more, Oppo is also talking a lot about color with this screen. So this display can um, reproduce 10-bit color and there is also support for HDR10 plus and you know according to them so this is what they told me right they told me that people have different kinds of color perception which is true like there's a whole bunch of uh, varying degrees of color blindness and you know color perception and all of that so to help make sure that everybody you know they have like the best color experience possible they've baked in something called the Munsell 100 hue test so if I were to bring up the color vision enhancement uh, screen, you can see that there's this option, uh, color vision enhancement. So if I turn it on, there's like a whole bunch of presets. So you've got gray scale, red filter, green filter, and then there's also personalized, which you tap on and you bring up this color vision test. So you can start this and then it's basically a hue test. So what you do is you arrange the hue based, uh, you, you fill up all the dots with all the hues and then it will be like, okay, your eyes can see this range of colors. So we'll adapt the screen to match. So apparently there's like over 700 different permutations and combinations that it can do. So um, the idea here is that you can get like the best possible color experience on your smartphone screen. I don't know how effective this is because when I did the test, it said that I had perfect color hue. Um, so that means no difference for me. <laughs> So a good screen obviously made me think like, okay, is this good for content consumption? And I gotta say, yeah, pretty much because it's got, first of all, that really nice screen. Second of all, a pair of pretty good stereo speakers. So uh, it's a earpiece plus bottom firing setup, but they sound like they sound pretty full. gaming, if you know mobile gaming, then you probably have heard of the ROG Phone 5. The other thing that a top-of-the-line flagship smartphone needs is a good camera system and Oppo apparently has spent a lot of time in developing this camera system. So it has two, you know, uh, new Sony sensors, these IMX766, which Oppo says that they've worked together with Sony to produce, and these are both 50 megapixel sensors. So you've got a 50 megapixel sensor, the wide angle camera, and also a 50 megapixel sensor in the ultra wide angle camera. So the idea here is that you will not then see like a drop in quality between the 50 megapixel uh, wide camera and also the ultra wide camera because that's usually where you know you'll see like a sacrifice in terms of image quality uh, and color performance the idea of using the same sensor is that you don't need that anymore uh, but in my testing okay first of all the photos that this phone can take, they're pretty good. Like I would say that they're right up there with some of the best flagship smartphones in the world. Uh, like I wouldn't have an issue with using this as like, you know, my daily driver for all the kind of stuff that I would shoot with like a smartphone camera. Daylight shots look crisp. There's plenty of detail. The colors definitely do look nice most of the time, but sometimes the HDR can be a little bit too aggressive. Like for example, if I take like a daylight shot, sometimes it goes like too, too extreme la, to, to make the sky um, not be blown out. So then it looks unnaturally um, exposed compared to like the rest of the photo, which is like really well lit. 
Image quality in low light is also pretty good. There isn't like a whole lot of noise, whether you have night mode on or off, though there definitely is a difference between night mode on and off. Night mode on has a lot more detail, um, but you know, the noise is okay, it's not too bad. And there's like a nice balance between sharpening and noise reduction. So the photos look pretty natural. But again, with night mode on, sometimes like it can get a bit too aggressive with trying to lift the shadows. So for example, some shots, you know, we'll see like, it, it looks a bit unnatural because they've lifted too much of the shadows. So it looks like a very flat image rather than like a more contrasty um, look that, you know, is, is like what I've, I saw when I took the photo. But to answer the claim of whether like the ultra wide and the wide has like the same kind of images, uh, it's still not really there. I mean, it's pretty good. Like I would say, it's pretty close. It's almost like iPhone levels of close, but there is still a little bit of difference in terms of like the color. And I think the lens on the ultra wide angle camera isn't nearly as good because if you look at the edge performance, you still, it's still a little bit soft and, and you do lose some detail there. And if you're taking low light photos with the ultra wide lens, there is noticeable vignetting. There is also a 13 megapixel telephoto camera, but you can tell like this, this phone isn't designed to be like super zoom the way the Galaxy phones are. Um, so you're good with like 2x zoom and it does 5x hybrid zoom which looks pretty good but anything more than that like I wouldn't recommend because you lose a whole lot of detail there. I'm also not like a huge fan of the 32 megapixel selfie camera up front. I think there's like too much whitening and just like just my skin tone doesn't look like that lah. Even when I turn beauty mode off right it still make me look like a Kyung C. But my favorite camera, okay, okay, before that, before that, I always complain about macro cameras, okay? I think they are absolutely pointless. I think they're so stupid, like, it's it's pointless. It's like, why? Why even bother, you know? You just get a little bit closer. Yeah, sure, you can see some details, but it's not like <laughs> mind-blowing kind of details, you know? Because at the end of the day, it's still like a, a close-focusing lens. But, so this is where Oppo has like, at first I was like skeptical, so, but then Oppo was just like, took that perception and was like, ha! Huh! get that shit out of here. Because what they have on the Oppo Find X3 Pro is something they call the micro lens. <sighs> Let me tell you, when I first saw it in action, it's ridiculous. So here are a couple of samples of what uh, I'm trying to take. Okay, so we have like, let's say this photo of my jeans. Okay, so this is like what a normal photo is and this is what it looks like with the micro lens. Like that is, that is an incredible, like that is insane. I can, count the number of threads that is in that weave so it's like it gets so close like it's like oh it's so close <sighs> it's incredible like i couldn't stop taking photos with this this micro lens it was insane like everything looked different it was almost like you're entering like ant-man's realm you know it's like the most mind-blowing macro camera that i've ever seen and finally okay yeah Maybe it's a bit of a gimmick, but it's so cool right now. It's probably the best party trick you could ever have. And, okay, so the, the way you take a photo is you put the, the phone down on the table, right, with the microscope lens on, and then you, you sort of lift it up to let a bit of light in. But to help it out, so as you can see here, there are three camera modules, right? This one, this is the micro lens. So that ring around it, that is a flash. So that will turn on and light up your subject. And... Like, it's so impressive, like, ah, uh, the, 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 the sample photos are probably speaking for themselves, but it's just, it's, it's so cool. I mean, I will admit, yeah, it's not like, it's probably not integral, it's probably not like, functionally useful, and you can't like, see cells and stuff, so you can't tell whether something has like, gross cells or not, but, but I mean, come on! Okay, so fanboying aside, there is a lot to like about the Oppo Find X3 Pro. But you know, the stuff that I mentioned here, besides like maybe the, the micro micro lens or like some of the other like unique things, um, you'll probably be able to find in like your Xiaomi Mi 11 or any kind of affordable Android flagship. So how can they sort of cross that barrier and justify like fighting with the big boys? Well, a lot of that has to do with like the little details, right? So Samsung has their ecosystem to rely on. They have stuff like Samsung Pay, and that's something that Oppo doesn't have like their own version of. But they have like 
whatever it is that it, they could put in, they have done it. So previously it lacked uh, uh, wireless charging. Now there's wireless charging. Uh, it also has IP68 water and dust resistance. It has this insanely incredible back design. And there's also something called the Find Experience, which is like an after sales service um, for people who buy the Find X3 Pro. And with this experience, uh, you get a whole bunch of perks that you know you would associate with like a premium product. First of all, you get international warranty. So anywhere that sells an Oppo smartphone, if there's like an issue with your phone in that country or wherever it is that you are, you can just go and claim your warranty there. You don't have to come all the way back to Malaysia, which sometimes you have to do, even with like high-end expensive smartphones. There's also like a priority service when you go to an Oppo center, so then you get you don't have to queue up with like the, the rest of the, the peasants who <laughs> buy the, the selfie experts. You've got your flagship smartphone, you've got your own lane. So, you know, that's that's like a, a, it's a touch. It's a nice touch, you know. There's also um, stuff like a courtesy phone when your phone is being serviced uh, and like a whole bunch of other things that, that really help you um, take like a regular smartphone experience, you know, up a notch. And I think that's, that's key if they want to compete in the area that Apple and Samsung are thriving in. So, yeah. If you ask me about the Oppo Find X3 Pro, I think that it is probably the best flagship I've ever seen out of Oppo. I think it has a lot of potential. I'm really excited to like use this smartphone. Um, but those are my initial thoughts. I'm pretty excited to see another competitor because I don't want anything to be a one horse race, right? That just, that just sucks. And uh, now that there is a huge gap that Huawei has left, you know, um, other smartphone makers, they better start stepping it up uh, because, you know, the pie is right for the taking. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Oppo Find X3 Pro. I'm I'm pretty impressed. I like it quite a lot actually, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think of the Oppo Find X3 Pro? Let me know in the comments section below. Speaking of comments, before I end this video, let me just um, you know reply to some of the comments that I saw on the previous Oppo video. So this is from my Oppo X2021, which is the rollable smartphone video. Uh, so Nabil says, nice, nice. Akim Salmon says, I wonder if the screen that is folding under is lit up also and though the phone is unfolded, is still draining battery. That's actually a good question. I didn't think to ask that to the Oppo Rep, but then again, it's a concept phone. So probably like when it goes to the market, it's probably going to be a little bit different uh, or if it, if it ever does, like, you know, it's probably going to be a little bit different and I think having something that constantly drains your battery is not going to be good for the smartphone, so they probably have to figure out a way around that. The Bad Fred says, I would love to see an increase in size three times the original size. So he's talking about the phone from like the small phone, then increase three times. I think that would be too big. Like as it is, like it was really quite hard to hold with one hand. Um, I think that size was okay. But if you go like three times, it's like... like that's, that's pretty massive. Like, okay, and we're talking about width and size? Like, oh my god, that's like a TV already. I don't know if I like that. I think that size is like okay, lah, about 8 inches. That's like... Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, hit the notification bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. You can also like us on Facebook, but our home on the internet will always be at surgeonshaw.com. And yeah, so leave a comment in this video, you know, to prove that I read the videos. I will be responding to all your not all your comments are, but I will be responding to comments in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Okay, this is Rory signing out. Bye-bye.